Let's take a look at a second problem. In this case, we're determining if a precipitate will form or not. Anytime you're trying to determine if a precipitate will form, you're going to have to calculate the Q and compare it to the KSP. If the Q, again, is greater than the KSP, then you know that um, a precipitate will form. If the Q is less than the KSP, you know that it's going to dissolve completely. So let's take a look at this. We're given two things that are being mixed. A person mixes 100 milliliters of 0 0.0015 molar calcium chloride and 50 milliliters of 0 0.0081 molar potassium sulfate. And we want to know um, if calcium sulfate is going to precipitate out. It gives us the KSP. And there's a lot of ions going here, but really the only thing we're interested in is calcium and sulfate. The calcium is going to come from this. The sulfate is going to come from this. Now, in this case, because we're adding um, a volume of one of the reactants plus the volume of the other reactants, our total volume is going to increase. Our total volume is going to actually be not 100 or 50, but those two added together, 150 milliliters. So really, we have to treat this as a dilution problem. So let's take a look at how to do that. In any dilution problem, we know that this is going to be true, that the initial volume times the initial molarity is going to equal the final volume times the final molarity. What we're interested in in this case is what is our final molarity when we add these two things together. So we can solve this for molarity final. If you divide both sides by volume final, you'll get this initial molarity times the ratio of the initial volume over the final volume. In other words, by however much the volume changes, your final molarity is going to change by that factor as well. So in this case, let's work the calcium chloride first. I'm going to do this in green. Calcium chloride concentration, that final molarity, is going to be equal to its initial molarity times the initial volume, which is 100 milliliters, divided by the final volume, which we said would be 100 plus 50, or 150 milliliters. In other words, this is a two-thirds ratio, and so our final molarity is going to be two-thirds of what it was in our original solution that we added, and so we would get 0 0.00050 molar. That's our initial concentration of calcium chloride. We're going to do the exact same thing for potassium sulfate. Our concentration of potassium sulfate is going to be our initial concentration, 0 0.0081 molar, times the ratio of the volumes. In this case, we started with 50 milliliters, and now there will be a total volume of 150. In other words, one-third of our original volume of potassium sulfate will be our, sorry, one-third of our original molarity will be our new molarity. We know our KSP for calcium sulfate is 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now we need to find the Q and compare it to that value. So I wrote out my Q, um, which is just the same thing as if we're writing our KSP expression. Calcium sulfate dissolving would give you one calcium ion and one sulfate ion. So we have calcium times the concentration of sulfate. We don't need any exponents here because um, just one calcium is formed and one sulfate is formed. From here, it's pretty easy. We're just going to plug in those concentrations that we have. This isn't at equilibrium right now. Again, this is our Q, our equilibrium quotient. Um, and this is going to tell us where we are right now. And we'll compare it to the KSP, which is what we can get to and still dissolve. So I plugged in 0 0.00050 and 0 0.0027. Multiply those together, and I get a Q value of 1.35 times 10 to the negative sixth. Let's compare those values. This is to times 10 to the negative sixth. This is to 10 to the negative fifth. Which one of those is smaller? Well, 10 to the negative sixth is smaller. So our Q in this case is actually smaller than our KSP value. We said that in this case, the Q will move toward the KSP. In other words, our reactants, which is our solid in this case, always when we're talking about KSP, we're going to look at solid dissolving. This solid is going to move toward our reactants, or sorry, our products, which is going to be the ions. 
In this case, when Q is less than KSP, it can dissolve completely. So in this case, we're not going to see um, a precipitate formed.